Hey folks, how are you? So welcome to today's video. It's Saturday, July 11th. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my trading layout setup on all of my monitors I have in front of me right now, which is a total of three screens, but I really pay attention to the one right in front of me and the one right next to me here the most, all right? So having a trading layout is quite crucial to your productivity because you need to be clear about what it is you are looking at while you're working and basically getting rid of all the noise. So over the time I've been developing my trading routine practice, I've gone through a large number of layouts. So if you've seen some of the videos on my channel, like in the last two months, you've probably seen me change my trading layout at least five, six times. And this is gonna happen, so get used to this. But right now, I'm finally settling with something that I'm kind of in the flow with. This is all I need. I don't need to look at any more information than this right here, okay? So what you're seeing right now is what I see on my main monitor right in front of me. So we'll take it nice and slow here and I'll basically go through all the platforms I use to trade and how I integrate them together. Let's start it off real quick here. So I use Interactive Brokers as a broker and basically I just use them to execute my orders. So here in Canada, there's a lack of brokers that offer low commission trading like Interactive Brokers. So that was my choice and that is probably your best bet in Canada anyways. But there are some other options, but again, they're not quite on par with IB in regards to the vastness of the amount of markets you can trade and the low commissions and the ability to do a whole bunch of different things. So recently I made a purchase of the Jigsaw Day Trader platform because I realized that for my current trading style, I required a more in-depth tape. And this tape right here is exactly what I needed and I love it so much, all right? So just to be clear, having a tape like this is not gonna make you a better trader, but what it will do is it will present you the information that you're looking for as a tape reader and present it to you in a way that's much more readable than a traditional time and sale. And again, in a super liquid market where you have a mix of retail, institutional, hedgers and everything, you wanna see where the transactions are taking place. And if you're looking at our traditional time and sales, unless you have the ability to filter out certain transaction sizes, you're not gonna really be able to see much. You're gonna see a whole bunch of flood of orders, but you don't have the memory to kind of program, okay, I saw where 100 lock came in at that price and you write it down instantly. That's probably what they did way back in the day. But I mean, look, if you have technology, you might as well use it, right? So what you're looking at here is a recording of my screen yesterday, and you can see I have three things on my screen. On the left, we have an IB chart, and I use this chart to execute my orders on via hotkeys with IB, all right? So that's pretty simple, and you can see on on this chart, all I have is a couple of exponential moving averages would be the 12 and 26, and I also use a four EMA, so when the market's really trending in one direction, that four EMA kinda comes in handy. Generally, I have this set to a 30 second chart, but I kinda shift it around one minute, 30 second, but I generally keep it on 30 seconds. So on my other monitor next to me, I have other charts on larger time frames, and we'll tell you about that in a minute here. So let's move on. In the middle part of my screen, I have my depth of market, or as Jigsaw would call it, a depth and sales. So you're gonna see here, these are the transactions that trade at each price, and of course the depth on each side. So for me, this is what I need in the center of my field of view. And again, this is gonna be so important because over time, I had many layouts that I had information kind of scattered across my screen. I might have had something there, then something along the side, then something on the other side. But what I really realized lately is that to have the maximum amount of productivity and focus, you need to have the information kind of lined up in your field of view. So when I'm looking straight at my screen, straight at the center of my screen, you can see the depth of market is moving. It's in my field of view. and. Right next to it, I have my tapes here set up to filter out block orders, and this is obviously the unfiltered tape, and then the block orders tape here and here, all right? So generally, everything is within my field of view at this point, and my eyes don't have to move halfway across the screen in order to see what I need to see, all right? So again, this is the main thing that I'm looking at the majority part of the time when I'm trading. And again, that is a decision that I've made based on how my trading has developed I've realized that this is all I need to look at the majority part of the time. On the right side, this is called an auction vista. Now, this is an advanced tool made by Jigsaw Trading, and basically, I just glance at it, all right? So what this is, generally, I'm not gonna give you a whole tutorial on it, but what it is, basically, it's a price chart. It will also show you where orders are resting in the market. When you see a, a highlighted print, that's gonna tell you that there's an order sitting there, and the lighter the color is, the larger the order is essentially. And sometimes you'll see an order that's been resting there all day 
and then want to look at the price how it trades when it comes up to trade that order sometimes you'll also see these massive orders pop up on the tape and again usually they're spoof orders if they just came out of nowhere because they can easily just get pulled right away as well but generally the orders that have been sitting there a long time they tend to trade so again i just use the auction vista here just to look at order imbalances and resting orders so the circles that form here basically show order imbalances so if the circle is majority red it means that there were majority sell orders that took place at that price and if it's majority blue then it means the majority buyers at that price all right so that's all it is essentially and the only thing i use the auction vista for is those two things which is one to show resting orders and to get an idea of where the resting orders are in the market because again that's quite important and two just to see another picture of buyer and seller imbalance which is also quite important okay now you can identify that stuff on the tape and on the volume profile as well but generally having these little circles here kind of gives it an easier way to view it right and again it's all about ease of viewability i don't want to sit here looking at 10 different things to tell me that there's more buyers than sellers i want it to be very apparent in front of me so Again, just having that ease of viewability for me has been the game changer. It's been the crucial thing that makes this so much easier to do consistently, right? So again, this is what I'm looking at on my main monitor all the time. And right now I have no need to change it. This is all I look at. This is all I need to look at. So let's move on. And I'm going to talk about what I have on my other monitors now as well. So generally I have a small monitor above me right here and th on this monitor, I have an IB screen like this. This is what's showing on my IB screen. The main things I tend to look at are this quote monitor right here. And again, the quote monitor is one of the most usable tools in IB, in fact, because you can execute orders right off of the quote monitor. And you can also view quotes, obviously, right off the quote monitor. You can view option data and implied volatility right off the quote monitor. And you can also view your position in PL, of course. This is one of the most convenient windows in TWS, and I highly suggest getting familiar with it as it's probably the easiest way to trade options. So what I would do if I was trading options is, so you're gonna pull up an options chain, and what you can do is you can, if you're trading options, you can drag in these contracts to your options chain and you can have like a mini options chain within there. So let's say you're pulling up and you trade SPY options, same day expiries. Generally, you have to know which strikes you're gonna trade. So what you do, if you're not exactly sure between one, the strike and that strike, what you do is you put them both in and you can create yourself like a mini options chain of the options that you're watching. So I might drag in the 320, 321, 322, 323, calls and I might drag in the 3 17 16 15 14 puts now I have eight strikes in the quote monitor and you can see them all and the deltas for each one of them and again that's why I prefer the quote monitor for options trading because once you drag them into the quote monitor you're just going to be able to execute your orders and to do anything regarding those contracts so again it's quite easy to do it with a quote monitor so go watch my video on quote monitor because I talk about it in that other video okay so over here there's just market statistics so these are going to show you the statistics of the market basically so the nice and the amx and it's basically just going to show advancing declining up volume down volume total volume and again just to get a feel for the broad market really i'm not staring at this all the time but it's kind of this is the kind of stuff that when you go to the new york stock exchange the kind of stuff they have posted on the walls on those screens and everything and it's just it gives you a good idea of like how many advancing stocks how many declining stocks and i'm not really making trades based on that but i mean it still gives you a good picture of the overall feel for the market right now okay so you can see the three big networks okay so nice c nasdaq and amex over here we have historical volatility versus implied volatility for whatever instrument you want and again this is a convenient little chart i recommend using this in ib it's one of the more convenient charts you can pull up so you can set it to whatever time frame you like right now it's set to two months and you can see here applied volatility versus historical volatility so that would be 30 day historical volatility and again, it's just a convenient little chart to have. So you can see if volatility is being understated or overstated in the current time period you're at. I also have option volume here. But again, these two parameters, I'm not using them right now because all I've been trading is futures. But if you're an options trader, probably it's a good thing to keep an eye on the option volume for certain strikes. And of course, you can do that in an option chain itself. But if you want to see it in a sort of vertical graph like this, you can use this option volume indicator. And the way to find these things is very simple. Just go to new window in TWS and you're going to go to option analysis or advanced option tools. And you're going to find that there. So option analysis, then you'll go to option activity, option volume, that type of thing. And volatility over time, historical volatility, and you'll find it right there. Okay. So over here we have a little news feed. 
And again, this is, uh, I don't really stare at this all day, but it gives a good idea of the kind of news headlines that are coming out. So I just keep it on SPY just to get broad market news. There's also a news feed from Jigsaw Trader and I can get that away from my screen. I programmed the hockey to turn it on and off like this. So if I wanna look at what the news is happening, I can easily see it right here. Now again, I don't look at this so much while I'm trading, but I do keep this screen here on this upper monitor to keep an eye on my market statistics and my quotes and the news basically. So this is the little layout I use in TWS. So that's pretty much it. So on my left side right here, you can't see it. I have a 24 inch monitor set up vertically and kind of tilted because I'm standing up right now. And basically what I use this monitor for is the platform trading view. So I use it to view my chart. So I'll full screen a chart for you right here. This is trading view. And generally I'll use a three chart layout on trading view. So I'll just go out and pull up this sort of layout. So you can see here I have a three chart layout. Now on a 32 horizontal monitor, you don't see it well, but on a 24 vertical, this is actually a really great layout. So you can see that now they look really squished. Don't judge it based on that. But that's kind of what I'm looking at on my third monitor here. And the time frames I tend to stick to are two minute and five minute. And I also look at the hourly and dailies just to mark in those key levels. So again, generally what I keep these charts on, on the middle chart, I'll have the NASDAQ futures. On the bottom chart, I'll either keep an ETF or the S&P futures, in this case it's the ES. And on the top chart, I have the tech stocks that I watch while trading the NASDAQ. So you can see here right now it's on Microsoft. Now I'll just show you my watch list real quick that I've created. And you'll see, look at how I organize this watch list. So I have the futures, ES, NQ, and Russell. Then I have the ETFs. And then I have the tech stocks that I watch for trading the NASDAQ. Now Tesla is not really a part of that. I had it there just because I was keeping an eye on it yesterday. Why I do this is because when you press the up and down arrow keys, what it does is it moves to the next ticker up or down in your trading view watch list. All right. When I'm trading the NASDAQ, essentially what I'm doing a lot of the time is I'm cycling through Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. Google and I cycle through them like that really quickly just to get a flow, get an idea of what these stocks are doing in their two minute trends or if they're coming to support or catching the support or not, you know? So again, I, I just use this top chart here to watch the uh, NASDAQ stocks. Right in the middle stays on the NASDAQ future and then on the bottom, it's either gonna be set to the Q's ETF or it's gonna be set to the S&P futures. So generally, I try to keep that as consistent as possible. And again, this is vertically displayed. So again, the charts are much more stretched out. You can't see it properly on this monitor right here. That's all I look at, in fact. Filming myself right now with my own cell phone here and I'll probably dub this over the video. So you're gonna be able to see here, this is my main monitor and I'm standing up looking at this and I have a very complete and clear view of what I'm seeing on my main monitor in front of me. And then on the left side, sometimes I, right now it's not tilted, but I'll tilt it a little more just to get an idea of those charts. And again, it's going to be the tech stock I'm watching for the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ future and the S&P future or the Q's ETF. And that's generally what I always keep to while I'm trading the NASDAQ, okay? On the top here, I just have TWS. But again, I'm not really looking at this ever. I just look at the market statistics from time to time and I look at quotes in the quote monitor from time to time, but that's generally it. So that's gonna conclude what I look at. As time has gone on, I've changed my layout at least 15 or 20 times or more. Right now I've settled with this because this is all I need to look at. I don't need to look at any more data than this. This is the maximum amount. And I think that less is more in regards to trading, less is more. So the less amount of things you look at, the better off you're gonna be, all right? So that's why I'm not a huge fan of a million indicators. Again, it's gonna depend on what you use to execute your trades, what you use to make your analysis and all that stuff. So this is just what I use. This is by no means any recommendation to what you should be using. This is just the setup that I currently use and mainly focus on trading the NASDAQ futures, all right? So guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. And uh, if you're interested in checking out the platforms that I use to trade, well, I have a couple of links down in the description below. So feel free to check those out. All right, guys, so I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Take care.